Do Siri and Alexa make your food choices healthier or unhealthier? This is the University of the Netherlands. I would like to talk to you about food. To be precise, I would like to talk about the things that influence us in our food choices that we make on an everyday basis. And we make quite many of them every day. Choices just like the one you see here between a chocolate cake and a fruit salad. I would like to know what you would actually choose. Can you raise your hand if you would choose the chocolate cake? Okay, I see some hands. Who would choose the fruit salad? Okay. Now take a moment and think about what influenced your choice. Why did you choose one option over the other? I can only speculate, but maybe you really like chocolate cake. Hence, you had to have that cake. Maybe you are on a diet, and that's why you decided to go for the fruit salad. These are, of course, all very valid reasons that shape your preferences. But there are other factors, very subtle factors, that are beyond our own understanding that often also shape the choices that we make. And in this lecture, I'd like to talk about one very specific factor that I think becomes more and more prevalent and important nowadays. To explain to you what this factor is, I'd like you to take a look at these pictures. All of them show situations in which consumers get food. At an all-you-can-eat buffet, for instance, consumers simply take the food that they would like to eat. At a vending machine, they indicate their preference by pushing a button. When ordering food online, consumers, you express the decision via mouse click or, for instance, by touching on your tablet or your phone. When you are in a restaurant, you speak to the waiter or waitress. And nowadays, because voice recognition becomes more and more popular, you might even be able to speak to a vending machine or when ordering food online, you speak to your phone. Now, these situations here differ in one very important aspect. They differ in what you, consumers, have to do in order to express their choice. This is what we call preference expression modalities. Boring, very scientific term, but it basically just means we are interested in how consumers express their decision. And we compare two very different instances. Voice, speaking, compared to motoric movements, touching, taking, button pressing. The question that arises is, would the way in which consumers express their decision have an impact on what they choose? The logical, normative answer to this question should be no. Yeah? Consider the decision that you made between the chocolate cake and the fruit salad. There is nothing that should change about your preferences for the fruit salad or the chocolate cake as a function of whether you have to tell what you want or whether you indicate it by button pressing. Your preferences should be stable. They should, but they are not. We know from a lot of research that our preferences are often influenced by very subtle changes in the choice environment. They are influenced by the procedure that we, for instance, use to express them. Now, the answer to the question you realize is yes, it has an impact. Now, the next question is, well, in which way? And here, I'm actually really curious to find out your intuition. And I would like to ask you to Consider again this choice between the chocolate cake and the fruit salad. Now imagine we are creating two groups, one group, second group, and they differ only in whether they have to speak or whether they express their decision by button pressing. We keep everything else constant. Who do you think would make the healthier choice? The ones that speak or the ones that push a button? Take a moment and think about it. Now, I would like you to raise your hand if you believe that people that speak, the group that has to express their decision by speaking, makes the healthier choice. Wow, this seems to be almost everyone. Let me do the counter check. Who actually believes that those that button press make the healthier choice? 
I see a few outliers here and there. Now, I knew what you would predict. I knew this because my research team and I predicted exactly the same when we started the research project many years ago. Now, today I can tell you predictions and intuitions are not always right. And I can also tell you that the majority of you and I are wrong. Congratulations to the few that were right. Now, the answer to the question is, speaking results in unhealthier choices. And what I will do during the next couple of minutes, I'll tell you about some experiments that we have done, show you the evidence, and then I try to explain to you why we believe that this is happening. Okay? Now, we started our research in a Greek restaurant in Germany. Um, and we asked everyone that was dining at that restaurant who did not order dessert whether they wanted to participate in a free dessert tasting study. Of course, many people said yes. If someone said yes, they would go with the waitress to a separate room, one by one. On the way, the waitress would explain, you know, you will see a table, there are two desserts, you have to pick one that you would like to taste. Unknown to our participants, she again created two groups, just like I told you earlier. One group was told, you go to the table, you will see the two desserts, and you have to indicate your choice by pushing on a little button that you will see in front of each of these two desserts. And she was saying that this button would keep track of how many people choose each of these desserts. I must tell you that was not totally true. These were simple doorbells that I bought in a do-it-yourself supermarket, but our participants didn't know this. So you see two buttons, you see two desserts, the fruit dessert healthier than the chocolate dessert. Now, the other group was told exactly the same thing with one minor but very important difference. They didn't see the button, and they were told to simply say their choice out loud right, by just reading the label. The waitress was always positioned next to the table in both groups, no difference. Now let's see what happens. If you look at these results, you see how many people chose the chocolate dessert, and how many people chose the fruit salad. The people that expressed their decision by speaking were more likely to choose the chocolate dessert, whereas the people in the button-pressing group were more likely to choose the fruit. Now, we were surprised, I told you, we predicted the opposite. What do scientists, what do researchers do? They go out and run further experiments to see whether this is really the true outcome. It's exactly what we did. We conducted another study at Maastricht University and uh, decided to buy a vending machine. For those of you who uh, always wanted to have a vending machine, turns out they are very cheap and you can actually easily buy one and put it in your living room if you want. So we had this vending machine and uh, put it in the, in the lab. And uh, all students that actually participated in our studies, we told them afterwards, you know, as a small token of our appreciation, when you go out, just grab a snack from that machine and take it with you. Again, unknown to our participants, we created different groups. Huh? The first group we told, you just go to the machine, you push the button of the snack that you would like to have. The second group, we told, you go to the machine, you will see a little microphone that we attach to the machine, it will record your choice, please just speak into this microphone. We had a third group that was told, please go to the machine and take the snack out of the machine. We left the door of the vending machine open. Now, you might wonder why we added the third group. Well, this third group is very important because the story that I'm telling you is not about speaking and button pressing. The story that I'm telling you is that speaking is different from motoric movements. Hence, it is important to also compare it to different motoric movements. Yeah? And that's what we did here by comparing it to button pressing and taking. Everything else, again, was kept constant. The same for all groups, research assistant next to the machine, the same. The vending machine was always stocked with 12 snacks that differed in how healthy or unhealthy they were. Meaning they differed in how many calories they actually obtained. We had carrots with only 11 calories and we had candy bars with more than 200 calories. Now what happened? 
we looked at the calorie amounts that our participants chose. And we see again that those that actually expressed their decision by speaking chose the snacks that were highest in calorie content. Whereas the other two groups are rather similar to each other in terms of how many calories the snacks had that they chose. If you run some statistic analysis, you see there are significant differences between, you know, the speaking group and the other two. Now we have two times the same result, speaking results in unhealthier choices. And I can tell you, we have run many, many more studies that all show the same result. I don't have time to tell you about all of them. What I want to do instead is I would like to try to explain to you a little bit why we believe that this is happening. Building on existing research, we believe that speaking actually seems to prompt more automatic choices. It seems to make you go for something that you really desire and makes you less likely to override this automatic tendency that you have. Now, why would that actually result in unhealthier choices? Well, for most of us, this chocolate cake is just really tempting. And this is what many of us find appealing. And this is what we would go for if we just, you know, we just decide. Only if we start deliberating a little bit, if we realize, well, we've been eating quite unhealthy lately, and uh, actually the fruit salad would be much better, and, you know, I've been gaining a little bit of weight, then we might actually realize that we might want to opt for the fruit salad instead. But speaking seems to make you less likely to do that. This is also in line with research in neuroscience that actually suggests that there's a certain region in the brain, uh, you can see it here, that is particularly activated when people engage in motoric movements. And this region is responsible for cognition and deliberation. It makes us think. Now, this could also explain why people that actually have to take or button press are more likely to override the automatic tendency to go for the cake and rather choose the fruit salad instead. Now, let's take a step back. Would there be any situations in which speaking might not result in unhealthier choices compared to motoric movements? If my explanation is right, then any situation in which we can make speaking less automatic, which we can take out the automaticity of speaking, speaking should be less likely to result in unhealthy choices. Now, let me pick your brain a little bit. Are there situations in which speaking could actually become less automatic? Okay, do we have a microphone? I think if you uh, have to speak in a foreign language, I guess. Fantastic. I will add you to the research team. If you speak in a foreign language, we know, building on a lot of research, that when you speak in a foreign language, it first of all decreases the emotionality. Second of all, it is less automatic. And hence, it might allow for more deliberation. Now, we thought, okay, let's test this. We went back to the Greek restaurant I showed you earlier and conducted another experiment, very similar to the first one that I showed you, but we had three groups. The first one spoke in German, huh, their native language. The second, again, pressed a button. And the third group was asked to speak in English, foreign language. We again had a healthy dessert and a not-so-healthy dessert. Let's see what happens. If you look at the results, you see that comparing the group that spoke in German to the button-pressing group, we again find that speaking results in unhealthier choices. But if you look at the group that had to speak in English, this group is no longer different from the people from the group that had to express the decision by button-pressing which suggests that situations in which speaking becomes less automatic would make us less likely to choose unhealthy options. So what is the answer to the question whether Alexa and Siri could make our choices healthy or unhealthy? Well, my research suggests that the answer is rather unhealthy. Yeah, in the specific situations that we studied, where you have 
self-control conflict, an option that is really appealing and an option that is better for you, if you think about it. Speaking seems to make you less likely to override your automatic tendencies and hence can increase the likelihood that you make an unhealthy choice. I hope that you find these insights useful and you might want to consider them the next time you order food, especially when you have to say your choice out loud. Thank you. Thank you.